Welcome to Stitchery Stories, where textile artists share their life in fabric and thread. Inspiration, techniques, disasters and delights. And I'm Susan Weeks, enthusiastic embroiderer and textile arts dabbler who also loves podcasting. So take a break and enjoy our light-hearted chat and please share with your friends so they can enjoy it too. Hello and welcome to our lovely guest today, Tracy Coverley. Hi Tracy. Hi Sue. Hi, it's brilliant speaking to you today. And I have a bio here from Tracy. I'm bits and pieces sorted. I'm not reorganised today. Right. Tracy Coverley, an artist based in Horwich End, Whaley Bridge, which is on the edge of the Peak District, started working under the name Handmade in Horwich End four years ago after leaving a long career in the railway. Classically trained in fine art at Loughborough College of Art and Design in the 80s, I concentrated on painting and focused on the urban landscape. On returning to art creation as a full-time preoccupation, I have found a new medium and subject and currently obsess over thread and fabric, producing portraiture in both 2D and 3D formats. And Tracy is a proud member of SEW, the Society for Embroidered Work. Right, there we are. That's Tracy in a nutshell. So, so we've got lots of questions for Tracy. And while I remember, because, I, you know, I always forget these things, um, Tracy's links. Right, now she's got a website. Now, all of these links, remember, will be on Tracy's episode of Stitchery Stories on stitcherystories.com. And uh, because Horwich isn't spelled how it sounds, right? So we've got handmadeinhorwichend.com. It's all one word. And Horwich is H-O-R-W-I-C-H. So her website is handmadeinhorwichend.com. You can find her on Facebook, also under Handmade in Horwich End. And she's also on busy on Instagram under Tracy Coverley and also on Twitter at Tracy Coverley. But we've been discussing, neither of us are very good at Twitter. So, no. <laughs> <laughs> so there we are. That's Tracy's links and website and everything. Right. Excellent. Right then, Tracy. So before we get too much into your story, your stitchery story, would you, would you like to share with us what you're working on and what's got you excited? Right. Well, at the moment, I've been working on a series of iconic portraits because uh, I've just set up a little exhibition in Nottingham. Ooh. So. Uh, meanwhile, I, I do a few little markets, so I'm part of New Mills Arts Festival also. There's an arts trail there right. where I've got a window full of uh, penguin book covers that I've stitched. So, yes, I've been very busy just at the moment, and I've got my preview tonight. So, Ooh, well, that'd be uh, good. Yeah, this afternoon I'll be jetting off to uh, sunny Nottingham and uh, meet a few people at Think, which is an art space in the centre of Nottingham. Oh, right. That is really interesting. And uh, is that the first time you've exhibited there, Tracy? Yes. Well, actually, um, I got the gig because I I entered the Open Spring exhibition. Right. And I got the People's Boat along with another textile artist, believe it or not, called Joy Pips. So there's three of us in the actual exhibition. Two of us are... Uh, textile and the third is Gillian Chu who is a printmaker. Right well that's interesting though isn't it out of three of you two of your textiles because we, we, we often get that you know I've talked with loads of guests before about the fact that it can be difficult to be considered alongside paint and paper artists. Yes um, definitely. You know which everybody finds very frustrating so that's actually the the um the worm has turned, as it were. That's not a very good phrase, but you know what I mean. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I think it is slowly changing, whereas previously people just saw embroidery as what your granny did in front of the fire and, you know, something as a preoccupation to keep your hands busy. Mm-hmm. But, but there are so many different uh, artists out there using, you know, textiles and threads and what have you in all sorts of different formats. And people are starting to cotton on to them. Mm. So I think also it's the way you present your work. Um, Once you frame it, believe it or not, suddenly it takes on a new life. People start looking at it differently instead of it being made up into, I don't know, 
quilts or mm. useful objects you know if you remove the usefulness almost out of it they start yeah. to see it for what it is it's a beautiful object you know yeah yeah mm. that's an in, that is an interesting point of view actually yeah and we and, and we often think well it's good to make something useful because people can use it but then as you say it's then possibly not viewed as art as such so yeah 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 Oh dear. Right. So how long is your exhibition on for? It's on for the next three weekends. Right. So it's open um Friday, Saturday, Sunday for each weekend. Um so if anyone's anywhere near Nottingham, I've not got the actual end date, but it's early October. Right, yeah. So that is really exciting then having your having your exhibition on the go then. And what other uh, have you got any other projects on the go at the moment as well, Tracy? Uh, well, I've, I've got some uh, commission work. I, I very often have a, a long list of commissions, private commissions. Right. So I just chip away at chip away at those. Most of them I can't mention just because they're yeah. usually as gifts, you know. Yeah, so. yeah, obviously. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, so but nothing else on the horizon as such. Um, obviously, Christmas. Yeah. That dreaded C words mm. coming soon. Yeah. So, so that's always it's always a busy time leading up there, isn't it? Because getting people in and getting commissions finished in time. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Exactly. And and I suppose people don't necessarily understand that these things do take time as well. You know, you can't just whip one up as it were. So. Oh. The amount of times I've had calls from people saying, can you just do my daughter for, for a birthday? When's her birthday? Oh, it's on Monday. Like, no, no, it doesn't work that way. But then I think it's partly because people don't understand. The don't region understand. And, and, yes. And how I actually work. Yeah. So yeah. very yeah. often people misinterpret my work as, as drawings, believe it or not. They, right, right. Particularly when they're viewing it on social media, unless they're looking at close-ups, very often they think I've drawn the drawn the images and and even actually when they're in the flesh they come to my house when I open my house up mm. I'll have someone just staring at the wall and saying oh they're very nice drawings I'm like no there's there's no drawing in it as such yeah, as yeah, yeah. I, you know I draw with the sewing machine I don't but and then someone the other day even thought I took a photograph and stitched over the photograph <laughs> so, yeah um so it can take a while to explain to people what exactly I do Yes, yes. So now a lot of the, the a lot of the things I've seen and like you've got say currently for the exhibition are they are you know portraits of, of rock stars and, and various other people like that. Now now you also say in three D, so how how does that work? Ah, right. Well this is what sort of started me on the road in the first place. All right, well that's I, always I my next it. question, isn't it? So brilliant. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well so organized, Sue. Yeah. I was looking for something to do when I decided to drop out of you know the the real world mm-hmm. and I made a couple of rag dolls for a friend's um, children yeah and it just got me on looking at looking at the dolls forms and I started producing figures uh, completely made of fabric yeah. and I was focusing on famous people so uh, they're about I don't know roughly 16 inches tall and oh, I right. made everything from scratch quite large then yeah yes yeah so so the, the the dolls start off exactly the same, like a blank that I make, but then mm. I manipulate the fabric to to generate uh, the facial features. Then I make all the clothes, and of course, when you're working with rock stars and things like that, the, there's a specific guitar that they use oh, to play, yes. and so everything it's all about attention to detail. So uh, I'd make the shoes and, and the <laughs> instruments and. And their hair, of course, and oh, yeah. everything from scratch. So now they are a labour of love, though, and yeah. they take a great deal of time to do. So yeah, yeah. While while I was actually doing the dolls, I was looking at also making cushions, thinking, what can I sell? Yeah, what will yeah. people buy? Yeah, you know, yeah. the usual, as we touched on before. Yeah. And I, I started producing some cushions using um album cover imagery and iconic you know names and things yeah and then I just I don't know this thing happened one day and and I produced a, a portrait using just I, I think it was white gray and black fabric layered up and a yeah. few different colored threads and wow this this face appeared out of nowhere <laughs> and uh, and that drew me onto the more two-dimensional work that I do now yeah although 
when I call it two-dimensional, to be honest, it's quite three-dimensional and it's always framed in box frames. I never have them framed with the glass close to the fabric right, because yeah. part of part of the illusion of, of, of these these portraits is because I cut the fabric and I allow the fabric to fall. So it, it's actually three dimensions, although it starts off um, in two dimensional form with just a couple of layers of fabric. Yeah. So as I cut away and as I stitch, it, it becomes quilted. It, um, you've got contours in the faces. The hair uh, can be made up just through the, the threads or uh, where I've cut away some layers to get at a darker colour. I've yeah. left those layers just falling down. So they become dreadlocks or whatever. Yeah. yeah. So. Oh, yeah. brilliant. And yeah, and I, I did notice a lot of your portraits are quite um, monochrome. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I suppose that gets around that problem of, of trying to get a, a skin colour, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think any artist in any medium will understand the, the you know, the issues you can have with skin. And you can get so obsessed with that. And, and it mm. shouldn't be an obsession about getting that that skin tone or or you know going around trying to find fabrics that way all the fabrics I use are actually and recycling I, I very rarely buy fabrics new brilliant so yeah fabrics are, I've got a stash you wouldn't believe I mean <laughs> and why my floor hasn't come down yet with the sheer weight of fabric <laughs> that I've got in my front bedroom you, uh, you, can, you can't even get in you know when you see those uh, programs about the hoarders on telly, like, <laughs> tunneling through newspapers, it's very similar to that. In my... <laughs> oh, you better not have a visit by the fire brigade then. <laughs> <laughs> oh God, I know. I tell you, if I had a fire, there'd be no chance. It'd be like the fire of London, and Whaley Bridge would have to get evacuated all over again. <laughs> Yeah, actually, because we were just chatting with uh, Tracy. So, as a side, Whaley Bridge was in the news about was it about months since Tracy when the uh, yeah, dam? Beginning of, yeah, beginning yeah. of August it was when That's it happened. It. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So, uh, <laughs> so if people are trying to think Whaley Bridge, I've heard of that before. It's because the big dam from the reservoir was about to fall, you know, crack. And 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 Tracy, I think you said you got evacuated as well. Yes, yes, I did. Oh, yeah. Dear me, <laughs> right. So. Uh, yeah, honestly, what? Oh, can you imagine having to leave your stash behind? <laughs> well, yeah, it's funny because everyone was saying to me, "Move all your stuff, move all your portraits, move all your work upstairs," and I'm like, "No," and they're going, "You must do it." I'm going, "Well, if I've done it once, I'm sure I can create more work," you know. And they just couldn't believe how sort of blase I was about it. And I thought, well, you know, if it happens, it happens. Yeah. But to be honest, you know, you. At that point, no one had a clue what was going to happen. No, and luckily, no. luckily, uh, it was averted. Um, yeah. So yeah, it's back to normal now. To be honest. Right. Brilliant. Yeah. yeah. No, I just thought I'd um, <laughs> I just thought I'd mention that Chris was scratching the heads, thinking evacuated. Why would you've been evacuated? <laughs> <laughs> right. So obviously, you have a studio at home then. Well, I live in an old shop premises, to be oh, honest, right. and I've, I've been here for nearly 30 years. Yeah. Uh, so, of course, when I started doing this, it was just a perfect place yeah. because cause it's quite large. It's on three floors. And I, the, the shop room was our lounge, but it, they've got the most amazing windows. Um, so I just started putting things in the window. Yeah. And people were like, "What? what's that in that window there? Because oh. I, I don't put prices on. I don't explain myself. I just started showing my work. Just putting stuff out there, yeah. Yeah, and luckily, it's about 20 yards from some, from some traffic lights. <laughs> so there's always a queue of traffic outside. So they're a captive audience. And it, you'd be surprised how many, how many people have contacted me since and gone, I've driven past your house for X amount of time. And I just thought, do you do commissions? I'm like, yes, I do. So, oh, so they fell into my trap, you see. And ah. I, I weave a web and they fall into it. And before they know it, they're commissioning work. Yeah. So. <laughs> <laughs> right, that's absolutely brilliant. Yeah, and um, I, I've got a few more questions about that um, later on. So now, so you mentioned there that you'd left left the railway and decided that you was going to start um, working on here. So obviously, that was a really good way of getting your work out there. Then was to put it in your shop window, <laughs> even though it yes, wasn't a shop. Yeah, yeah. I mean, Fabulous. to be honest, I wasn't seeing it that way uh, no. at all. It was just that no. there was a big window there, and I thought, oh. 
I'll see what people think, you yeah. know, whether people stop. Yeah. So and they have done one of the ways. Oh yeah. god, yeah. 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 No, that's really fascinating. And and so other than other than your shop, your shop is not a shop, but other than you like <laughs> doing that for your window, what you know, have you found any other ways that have you know, because you said you get commissions, you had a long list of commissions. So how, how yes, does that happen? I'm yeah. sure I'm so nosy, aren't I? I'm sure lots of people are thinking, <laughs> oh, how, how she got a long list of commissions? <laughs> right. And basically, it's the wonder of Facebook. <laughs> Facebook, so, right. Yes. So I have always had a Facebook uh, page mm-hmm. um, or rather account, not a page. But when I started doing this, I opened a page. So yeah. I, I, I started just bombarding people with posts of, of, you know, work in progress, Mm -hmm. things had finished. Um, And then I started with Instagram because it's a far more visual, which then links up to Facebook. And it it was just amazing. Uh, I made one of my early works was a six foot by six foot quilt. (laughs) And it was... It was basically the album cover of the jam called Sound Effects, which was made up of about 25 photographs, the the original. And I just translated it into this quilt and made some dolls of the jam. And someone put them on a Facebook fan page of the jam and it went mental. Wow. Um, Yes, absolutely mental. And uh, I was getting all these hardened 50-odd-year-old jam fans asking me to make them dolls, which (laughs) I just found quite hilarious. In fact... Fantastic. Yeah, I have two wow. sort of uh, clientele. So it tends to be the women that go for portraits and it's always the men that go for the dolls. Never. Uh, honestly. Really? If a, if a woman wow. commissions me to do a doll, it's for their husband or their son. <laughs> Which, uh, you know, when we're told wow. from, from the day we're born that dolls are for girls, girls. you know, and and it is it's true i mean I, there's there's a fellow down in london who's he he must have a dozen of them <laughs> he's commissioning me so he's, he's got the jam he's got um the beetles in sergeant pepper's mode he's he got uh, the sleaford mods so that once they get Brilliant. one they always yeah. want another and then another so yeah well that's it see repeat customers you can't beat it can you yeah brilliant that you know you would never ever think that would you you wouldn't think that at all right and so so you've got instagram and facebook so do you find one better than the other for for getting work ah right so so god i'm nosy aren't i sorry (laughs) (laughs) Facebook has very definitely been the one for me. Facebook is the one that gets me my commissions. Wow, yeah. Whereas Instagram is great for showing you work with like-minded people, with other yeah. artists and creators and everything, and it's great for support. Yeah, and it it's a community, isn't it? There. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, but when yeah. it comes to getting sales, it's Facebook. It's weird. I don't know because it's quite a random thing. Is Facebook anyway? So. Oh, it's getting worse and worse, isn't it? For in terms of, of reach is. and things, you know, it really yeah. is getting difficult. So, but right. for me, it is the best thing, and you don't really have to work at it. I've never ever paid for adverts or anything like that. Right, I, it's just well being organic. That's interesting yes, as well because yeah. that was going to be my next nosy question. <laughs> <laughs> The thing is, you can get so tied up with what do mm. I need to do? And people keep telling me I must do this and I must do that. And, you know, it will happen, but you've got to put a bit of work in it. I mean, I'm far from perfect. And my one downfall is my website. <laughs> now, I could do so much with my website, but it's always out of date because it's not as, a, as immediate as social media networking and, and yeah. what have you. Yeah, you know, yeah. So I know I've, there's a lot of work to be done. I haven't even opened my shop which I, I've got the potential of on my website. Yeah, definitely, yeah. Uh, yeah. But, you know, while, while I've got commissions on the books, I tend to concentrate on the actual pre- production of, uh, you know, of the works. Yeah, getting stuff done, yeah. generate, yeah. you know, even more work, yeah. So. yeah. No, that's, that's mm. absolutely fascinating. Thank you for sharing that with us, Tracy, because I do come across, you know, quite a lot of artists and they're all going, oh, no, I don't want to be on Facebook. Yeah. Oh, Tell no. me about it. Pe- people, <laughs> you know, people know all about me. Well, they don't have to know about you. No, that's what a page. Only need that's to what know. a page is for. You're an artist, and about your work. And but do you know what though? People are very interested in 
the story behind the pieces. Yes. Yes, I've found definitely. that so many and chatting to so many artists, you know, people that so you do have to put some of yourself out there because people are also sounds weird buying a bit of you too. Of course, of course they are. It's it's a free resource. Well, it still is currently. Yeah. Who knows what might happen? <laughs> it, <laughs> but it's one of the best tools to get out there because you you can sell all the work you want locally but it gets to a point where it's a saturated market you've got mm. no one you've got to spread your wings and like I say the best way of doing it um, and the cheapest because it's free is to use social media I think I mean yeah. I I help with Derbyshire Open Arts uh, artist studios uh, every year when yeah. they open their studios and I help the committee with that and the social media mm. and I, I'm constantly amazed you'll have 200 artists and out of that 200 artists, there's so many that don't even have an account on on mm. any social media platform. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and you just think you can't, you you know why aren't you using it? Mm. It's, yeah. it's really true. In fact, that's how I found you is because somebody had been uh, had taken part in the as you know as a as a, as a visitor and the Derbyshire Open Art Studio or whatever it's called anyway so that they'd, they'd yes. seen you and seen your work and then sent me an email going oh I really loved her work and I think you would too you know <laughs> can, can I just say thank you very much to that woman who did that <laughs> <laughs> yeah so well if you if you aren't there and you aren't doing something nobody knows you're there you know you're not, no. you're not gonna be you're not gonna get anywhere by just sitting on your settee are you not talking to anybody no. so no. that's anyway. you could be the most talented artist mm. on the planet but if you don't tell people where you are or show your work no one will ever know yeah true so um what about then major who, who you know do you find anybody inspiring what kind of inspired you to 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 do this sort of work do you mean artistically wise or well, any just any anything you know, whatever you find in, inspiring to you? <laughs> well, for me, uh, the, the the people I choose in my portraits and and what have you have always been uh, icons of yeah. uh, either from film or or from music. Yeah, I've got. I grew up as a little mod in the eighties, <laughs> uh, so it was the Jam and and all those uh, revivalist mod groups that were around. Yeah, um, yeah. and then which led me on to the sixties. I was always mad on Tamla Motown, which then got me into Northern Soul. Right, yeah, so it yeah. expanded that way. So yes, um, musically, it, that was my thing. So I was always a generation or too late if you know what I mean so <laughs> so and it was the same with the film as well the films I used to watch as a kid were always the Saturday matinees of the 60s films I loved that iconic oh, you know right. everything yeah. about the 60s yeah. was just so super cool yeah I loved black and white films when everyone else was raving about E.T. and <laughs> you know Jaws and everything and, and they liked all the special effects I just fell in love with those beautiful healing comedies and, and things like that so so that's inspired me I, I, I presume in my styling I suppose mm. uh, with the monochrome yeah. you know portraits um, yeah. even dolls I mean very often they're, they're they're images of people from uh, a bygone era it's very rare that it's current yeah well I think some of the current people are not very iconic anyway are they but that just makes me no. sound old <laughs> Yeah, I think that's just us being old, don't you think? Because I'm sure the young ones out there are thinking, what do you mean they're not iconic? You know, they're my idols. Yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah, we're so, all stuck in that groove of, you know, I'm 54 and just think, oh, I love the Clash and Susie and the Dances. No, it's, it's all the same old stuff, isn't it? It's like when I was speaking with um, Jane Sanders, she does the, the colourful yes. portraits yeah. of um, same thing, uh, iconic pop stars. And we're all, we were having a laugh about that. It's like, it's all the people we loved when we were teens. Yeah, yeah. But, but I must have hit on something because my clientele are always loving them, you know. So, yeah, yeah, exactly. so it must be people of our age mm. that you know. So I would say yes. so, yeah. Because half these bands are still on the go, aren't they? You know, they're, they're seventy and they're still playing. Oh yeah, <laughs> but sometimes you wish they'd, you know, retire, don't you? <laughs> Enough's enough. Don't fancy you anymore now. You're wrinkly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. oh, dear me. Right. And then um, in terms of your, your technique, how, how have you developed that then, Tracy? 
Right. Well, I think it's partly because I'm completely untrained in, in textile art. Right. As, as said before, I trained mm. actually as a painter. Yeah, yeah. Um, so when I approached, I've always used a sewing machine. I, I made my own clothes when I was a kid because you couldn't get, you know, 60s clothes in the shops uh, no. back in the 80s. And no. so, so I used to make my own clothes and everything. And so I was a practical stitcher rather than an right. artistic stitcher. Yeah, yeah. Um, but when I decided to create images um, through stitching, the natural thing for me was to use my sewing machine. And without having any previous knowledge of how to do free hand, um, you know, machine embroidery. Yeah, free machine embroidery, yeah. Yeah. See, for instance, I don't use a darning foot. Everyone seems to use a darning foot and, and stretch the fabric on a on a hoop by yeah. looks of, you know, and I don't do any of that. I just use the normal conventional foot on, yeah. my, on my machine. I stick to just a couple of stitches, but yeah. I vary widths and lengths. Widths and lengths, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so it's generally straight stitch yeah. and zigzag. Occasionally yeah. I'll put a snazzy little stitch in. <laughs> but generally I just I just draw with my sewing machine. Yeah. Um, so I use reverse applique. Right. Yeah. So I start off, I, I always pad my work out because it helps um, keeping the, uh, the fabric all not stiff, but a bit yeah, firmer. Yeah, it gives, it, gives it some just, body, doesn't it? It doesn't exactly. kind of shrivel up as much either. That's it, yeah. 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 So, so like I say, I don't use a hoop either. So I'll layer my fabrics for the tones I want to use. Um, like, like we've said previously, most of mine are monochrome. Yeah, yeah. So... I'll go from dark to light with the white on the top of uh, of the the pile. Oh, I'll right, do a yeah. very rough sketch because yeah. there's no point drawing out my image because I cut away the cut fabric. Up, yeah, point and by it. cutting away the fabric, you cut, cut away, away the image. That you, <laughs> yeah. yeah, so it's a complete waste of time trying to do that. So basically, I just cut away and stitch down and cut away and stitch down until I've got the image that that I like. So. Um, constantly changing the thread colour, of course. I've probably got about 20 different tones from white through to black that yeah. I, I use. Um, yeah, so it's it's quite a laborious process because I don't do, say, all the black thread and then go on. I layer it. So I might start off with uh, an outline of black where it's dark. Yeah, but yeah. in some places, I won't even use any black thread and it'll be white on white. Yeah, so yeah. You, you get you get a sculptural um, image without actually outlining it with with you know a tone. Yeah. So yeah. I've got a, an Andy Warhol currently in my exhibition, which I'm really pleased with, because he had that shock of white hair, and the mm. photograph was taken with a white background, so it was almost invisible. You know how it is in photographs, where yeah, yeah. you know some some parts just disappear. So yeah. to just create that. I just had one little white stitched line and it, it just created this illusion of a mass of hair. Brilliant. In one line. Yeah. Yeah. So. yeah. All oh, right. Oh, that's that's really that's really interesting how you've developed that. And as you say, with reverse applique, you you you're cutting your lines, you know, you're cutting your pattern away, aren't you? So it's like Exactly, yeah. exactly. <laughs> so that therefore brings back the artistry and your kind of base artistic technique and ability. Because each time you re, you, you're kind of looking at it, think right, what do I need to do here? You're not following yes. a, a, a an outline, as it were, that you've already pre-done. So exactly, yeah. I never, yeah, yeah. I never have a plan. Yeah, it, <laughs> even down to the choice of fabrics. To be honest, it's what's at hand. Yeah. Um, I mean, obviously, there'll be certain amounts. Some some images are probably lighter than yeah. than others. So I will obviously consider that. But it's just the fabrics I've got to hand that give me two or three tones because the stitching itself is like my drawing, mm. and the fabrics are like washes that you yes. use, say if you were yeah. doing watercolor. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. what I do then is, of, of course, I cut away until I get the right tone that I want from from light to dark. So it's not necessarily the thing that's in front. So, for instance, when you're painting, you're putting things on, on yes, and you're laying yeah. it up. Yeah. What I'm doing is yeah. actually taking away taking to it get away, to what yeah. I want. Yeah. Wow, yeah. brilliant. Now, you mentioned there about you did some dolls for the jam and you put them on Facebook and they went viral and people got really yes. excited about it. <laughs> so so does, does that, um, you know, have you got any high points from, you know, from there? 
of, yes, of your so journey definitely. so far. Oh, go on then. <laughs> so, so the jam dolls were quite early on in in my career as a full time artist. Yeah. Um, and I because it went viral, I got contacted by some fella who was doing an exhibition in Liverpool. Yeah. And he was doing it in conjunction with uh, Paul Weller's sister. <laughs> Wella, and they were doing all sorts of things around this exhibition of the whole of the, of the career of the jam yeah. and they asked me to take some dolls there which right. were, ended up in the exhibition shop and also on the tables when they were doing interviewing of uh, journalists and what have you which was wow. brilliant because of course people were taking photographs at these literary events and my dolls were in front of these people being interviewed fabulous which, you know, it was it was brilliant but anyway as as a consequence i also ended up getting a commission from paul weller himself it wasn't Whoa. the jam dolls <laughs> it wasn't jam dolls everyone always says oh what did what paul weller ask for? he didn't want a doll of himself but he is, he's always been obsessed with small faces and that's how I got my love and Steve Marriott and, and he asked me to do the small faces in, in dolls. So I was blown away by that. Um, wow. <laughs> wow. Oh, that's fabulous. Oh, yeah, Weller yeah. ringing, ringing you up. Blow. Yeah, yeah. Well, I actually missed, I missed the <laughs> missed call his from call. him. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I woke up the next day and found a voicemail from, from this bloke who, who said, <laughs> Pretending oh, uh, to be Paul my Weller. Name's my name's Paul Weller. I'm like, no way, no way, it's not him. And I just played it and played it, and I thought, God, it is. It's it's Paul Weller. Have, you, have you got it recorded? Back. Have you still I got have, it recorded? Yes, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so so I had to ring him back, and it was the most terrifying thing because oh, don't forget, wow. I grew up idolizing yeah. this man, oh. and and he's wanting me to make something for something him. For it's him. just unbelievable. Oh. So. Obviously, Brilliant. I made the dolls, and then the highlight, because we've not even got to that bit yet, is that uh, I had to hand deliver down at his studios, and, oh, and I met him, and oh, oh my God, oh, I, nearly, I nearly fainted. <laughs> <laughs> Who'd have thought it? I often say, don't I? Who'd have thought yeah. it that, you know, yeah. creating textile art and embroidery can lead to all these exciting things, and yeah. that is Meeting a... That your is a, idol. <laughs> that is a brilliant, brilliant story. Yeah. Fabulous. Oh. Thank you for sharing that with me. You're welcome. Right. Now, now, since you have been doing this relatively recently and obviously do a lot of commissions, um, do you have any of those dreaded unfinished objects lurking about anywhere? You know, I mean, we've had some fairly hilarious ones that have been going on for years. Do you do you have any, Tracy? Oh, I've got plenty. Have you? <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. In between commissions, I do uh, images that I just love myself, you know, yeah. so... But you get to a certain point and you think, I better leave that one alone. And, <laughs> and at first, I used to actually shove them to one side. And of course, they'd get lost in my huge stash <laughs> yeah. in, in the room. So what I started doing was I now hang them. I actually hang them on a washing line in, in, <laughs> in one of my workrooms. So basically, it's like that guilt that you look up <laughs> and you see all these faces staring down at you, or even half faces in some cases. Yeah, and it's it's pretty scary. So you don't like to leave them there too, too long. long. <laughs> no, I, I love that. Your UFOs are haunting you. <laughs> yes, yes. So so I have uh, this neat washing line with half finished or just started uh, portraits, which. I can't actually um, leave too long because my my hubby, we're not married actually, but my <laughs> hubby comes in from work and he sees all these faces staring at him. And, oh, and, uh, oh, no. <laughs> it's a bit like a haunted house. I mean, God, when, <laughs> when Halloween comes, my God. <laughs> I should open it up as a haunted house actually and, yeah, just dim the lights and people go, who's that looking at me over there? Oh, dear. Yeah. So. <laughs> Oh dear me! Well, that's that's certainly a novel approach to um, you know lots of people hide them, don't they? Throw them in a bag and put them in the back of the ah, cupboard, but like to leave a them, guilty secret. Yeah, yeah, but to leave them <laughs> hanging around, <laughs> literally, yeah. it's brilliant. You've either got to finish them or get rid of them, basically, don't you? Yeah, I think yeah. It, they're staring at you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's great. Now, and is there is there any particular thing that you do to help you organise your your creative time, Tracy? Oh. One of my weaknesses is uh, oh, time, to be honest. We all have certain things we love to do, yeah. and we all have things we hate to do. Mm, and unfortunately, um, I do try and 
ignore the things that I hate doing. Uh, <laughs> so I'm not very organised, believe it or not. So <laughs> deadlines are fantastic for me. If you someone gives me a deadline, I will yeah. work to it. Right, but if yeah. they turn around and say, I would love you to make me this, in your own time. When you get round to it. <laughs> yeah, no. If, if they say that to me, it will never happen. So I have to say to them, you've got to give me a deadline. Right, right, yeah. yeah. Yeah, because yeah. I can, I can, I get very distracted very easily, especially when you're stitching, because you go into a a different dimension, don't you? When yeah. you stitch, I yeah. think it's yeah. a bit like they say about internet time goes travels really fast. <laughs> yeah. When you're stitching, you just go somewhere else completely, but then you can go off on a tangent, which I very often do. And yeah. Before you know it, you're like, oh, I should have done that job over there and I haven't even started it yet because I got distracted by this colour thread or, yeah. you know, this piece of fabric. So, yeah, I, it's my biggest weakness. I do manage to do all my commissions to the deadlines I'm given, but I also have to stress to people they've got to give me a deadline. Right, yeah, so <laughs> very, very motivated by deadlines. So I, I did yes. notice you'd posting about um, getting stuff done for your exhibition in Nottingham. So, yeah, was, um, yeah. yeah that was the, the last one I saw was the, the, the one with the Clash on the NME cover. So I, oh, I, I love that one. Yeah. I love the Clash. Yeah. <laughs> Here we go well, again. Well, when, when I put that on Instagram, actually, um, I you know your tags that you use. Yeah. I was tagging NME and, 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 and all the rest of it. And, and the photographer actually contacted me and complimented me, which I was really pleased about because, you know, very often I'm using other people's images. I might manipulate them and turn them into yeah. something else. But, you know, that that there's someone else has, has, mm. has started that process. And for him to actually compliment it, I, I was so, so pleased Oh, with that. that's fabulous, yeah. So was it the, the photographer, the original image, the original photographer? Yes, yeah. His name's Ch- Chalky Davis. So he took the photograph in 1977. Wow. Um, yeah, and um, he actually commented on, on my so I was so pleased with that oh that's wonderful yeah. oh, I see you never know how people are going to react are you when no. when you use other people's images so. no no I think mm. that's right you know giving giving them credit as well is always a good starting yes. point isn't oh, it oh, yes. so, so many people <laughs> don't yeah no, they right. Don't. <laughs> right that's brilliant well Tracy you know as we head towards our time as I say all the time we could spend all day talking about mm. this <laughs> <laughs> so um so you've got your exhibition on the go at the moment have you got any kind of future plans and projects that you want to share with us today as we just start to wrap up um no, I'm, I'm looking at the moment. I'm just doing a bit of uh, investigating to see if I can find any other new venues where I can actually show my work because right. I've not had a chance to to show it as such in shows. It's tended to be over the internet, as, yeah. as we've discussed. So, yeah, yeah. so the next few months, it's more about trying to find venues where I can actually show my work. So, yeah, yeah. And obviously, stitching, 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 stitching. That's all I see to do these days. Yeah. With, uh, you know, eat, live, sleep, everything is, <laughs> is all about stitching. It's complete obsession taking <laughs> over my life. <laughs> well, but do you know what? As, as a change in career, and you know aban- abandoning the, the corporate life etc cetera, etc cetera. It, it's yet another because I've had a lot of people now it's yet another success story that that change although probably scary at the time has worked oh, out yeah. really well for you and yes oh, from I, a lifestyle you know, point of view as well as you know your artistic yes. point of view so yeah brilliant well done well done with that yeah. so everyone should do it <laughs> <laughs> Right. Brilliant. Anyway, Tracy, that's been absolutely fantastic. So remember, you can go and find her on Facebook, Handmade in Horwich End, Instagram and her website. And um, if you're in Nottingham, go and see her work. That'd be really brilliant as well. And yeah, it's been absolutely fabulous speaking to you, Tracy. I've thoroughly enjoyed myself today. So, and um, you, Sue. Thank you very much for inviting me. It's been me. wonderful. No problem at all. And thank you to the lady who sent me the email. I yes, can't remember a name, you. sadly. <laughs> You'll know who you are, you're a listener. <laughs> if you enjoyed this episode and want to hear more, then please join the Stitchery Stories fan club so you can get an email when a new episode is released. It's a quick and easy way of listening and of keeping up with any news and information around this podcast. Please visit stitcherystories.com. Of course, you can listen to Stitchery Stories on plenty of podcast apps at Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify and plenty more besides. 
You can also ask your smart speaker to play Stitchery Stories podcast too. But wherever you listen, why not leave us a rating and a review to encourage other people to listen too. I very much appreciate you taking the time to do that for me. So that is the end of our Stitchery Story for today. Keep stitching, keep smiling and keep creating your very own Stitchery Stories.